Florence charms visitors with its mix of majestic chapels and fortified palaces. Elegant gardens are spread out near museums that house Renaissance masterpieces. The Arno runs through Florence at the base of the Apennines and picturesque stone bridges like the Ponte Vecchio cross over it, allowing you to easily explore both halves of this idyllic Mediterranean city. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 best things to do in Florence. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now let's cut to the chase. At 10, Opera di Firenze, classical and live performances in a modern auditorium. Opera di Firenze is a modern auditorium on the outskirts of Florence. It's home to one of the world's longest running classical music and opera festivals, the Maggio Musicale Fiorentino. Throughout every annual festive season, the venue shows performances and collaborations of some of Italy's finest orchestras, theatre directors and artists. Operas include Giuseppe Verdi's melodramatic rendition of Shakespeare's Macbeth in four acts. Opera di Firenze is around an 18-minute ride by bus 22 from Santa Maria Maggiore downtown. Next up at 9, Mercato Centrale. Mercato Centrale, Florence's central market, is a fun and lively spot to visit. With the many food stalls to choose from, you can relax, eat and shop. It's also great value as the prices are reasonable for the fresh and authentic Tuscan food you get. You can sample the items from each vendor on display before you decide to buy anything, making it a great opportunity to discover the best flavours of the Tuscany region. Come early to witness how some of the dishes are prepared. At 8, Uffizi Gallery. The Uffizi Gallery is a 16th century office building in the heart of Florence where you can wander through a long row of rooms that house a vast collection of Renaissance artworks. The works are set in chronological order and include religious artifacts that reflect the sense of piety of those ancient times. It's home to some famous classical pieces such as Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, Caravaggio's Medusa and Da Vinci's Annunciation. Tickets are from about €6.50, Euros 50, but it's good to pay a little extra for a guided tour. You'll gain a better insights and, most importantly, skip the usually long lines. At 7, Oltrarno Corta. The Oltrarno Corta is worth exploring if you've covered most of Florence's central hub. It's considered one of the most beautiful parts of the city and a historic cradle where you can find some of Florence's grand monuments and palatial sites. These include the wondrous Palazzo Pitti and the linked Boboli Gardens around a 15-minute drive west of Piazzale Michelangelo. You can cross over to the Altrarno Quarter via several bridges such as the landmark Ponte Vecchio and most of the walks are pleasantly shaded along lush tree-lined paths. At 6, Basilica of Santa Maria Novella. The 15th century Basilica of Santa Maria Novella is one of Florence's most beautiful Gothic churches. Its facade shows spectacular examples of Italian Gothic style, featuring coloured marbles in a combination of green and white. Pay about €7.50 to get inside this vast church and you'll find more colours through its central arches, plus masterpieces by some of Italy's greatest. The highlight artwork is the Trinity by Masaccio. Some consider the church's frescoed interiors to be far better than the Duomo's. At 5, Piazzale Michelangelo. Piazzale Michelangelo is a 19th century hilltop square that offers a full and stunning view over Florence from across the Arno. A full-sized bronze replica of Michelangelo's David faces the city from the square's centre. You can reach the square either by going up the flight of stairs of Poggi's ramp from the lower Piazza Giuseppe Poggi or on a 15-minute scenic drive from the city hub via the tree-lined Viale Michelangelo. Access to Piazzale Michelangelo is free. At 4, Ponte Vecchio. Ponte Vecchio is one of Florence's oldest bridges crossing over the Arno, linking both halves of the city. The bridge is picturesque when viewed from the other bridge to its west, namely the Ponte Santa Trinita. Crossing Ponte Vecchio, you'll find it's lined with a variety of small jewellery and watch shops and bustling with pedestrians around the clock. Prices in the shops tend to be touristy though. 
The bridge is your main access for visiting two of Florence's piazzas, the downtown Piazza della Repubblica and the Piazza di Alpiti in the Arno Southern Bank. At three, Michelangelo's David. Michelangelo's David is a marble sculpture of the biblical figure of King David in Florence, widely acknowledged as a masterpiece of 16th century art. The statue is 5.17 meters tall and carved from a single block of marble. You can see an extraordinary level of detail, including veins visible in David's hands and separate locks of hair. Take note of the sculpture's right hand, which is larger than the left, possibly as a symbol of David's strength and power. The sling over his left shoulder and the rock in his hand are weapons for his forthcoming battle with Goliath. Michelangelo's David originally stood in front of the Palazzo Vecchio, but it was replaced with a modern replica in 1910 and the original was moved to its current home. At 2, Giotto's Campanile. Giotto's Campanile is the bell tower right next to the Duomo and is one of the tallest historical structures dominating Florence's skyline. Together with the adjacent cathedral, the tower showcases one of the city's best examples of Florentine Gothic architecture. It's mostly a vibrant white colour and all four walls below its midsection feature numerous sculptures. Most visitors to the Duomo spare enough time to climb up for panoramic views from around 84 metres high. You'll need to walk up to the 400 or so steps to the top, with pauses at its three middle floors for bonus views. And finally, at one, Piazza del Duomo. Piazza del Duomo is Florence's main public square, with the Santa Maria del Fiore Cathedral at its central landmark. Buzzing with pedestrians, it provides you with a good first sense of Florence's mix of old and new. Modern restaurants and shops border the square, housed in well-preserved Renaissance-style buildings. The cathedral's Gothic frontage features three massive bronze doors and lunettes covered in coloured marble and reliefs. Inside, you'll find a fine display of mosaics throughout. Access is free. And there you have the top 10 best things to do in Florence. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.